Hello everyone, welcome back to IAPD Global and this is Dildan with you and in this video we are going to see how we are go how to you know uh, do communication based on Modbus in the Siemens S7-1200 PLC. So in the previous videos we saw how to do Profibus uh, specifically with the remote IO with the VFD and in this video first of all uh, we are going to see the two variants. Uh, there is a Modbus RS485 variant and there is a Modbus TCP variant that is available in the Siemens PLC. The first that we are going to see is the RS485 variant. So the RS485 variant is pretty simple to use. Let's see how to configure the hardware in this video. And in the coming videos, we will see how to read and write data, uh, read and convert data and all those things in the coming videos. Okay. So first of all, you know, I have just created a, you know, a new program. So let's go to Cimatic. So my PLC is going to be a 1215C DC-DC relay. So it's just sitting a bit far away from me. Uh, you would have seen that PLC in my previous videos. So I'm just removing everything. Flexus, um, next and finish. So in the hardware configuration, so First of all, we need to understand what are the available communication models. So you, you remember that in the Profibus video, I told you that you need the Profibus master module for this. Similarly, for doing Modbus, you need the Modbus communication module because the Siemens S7-1200 does not come with an internal communication module, internal Modbus 485 communication module. It has an internal Modbus TCP, but not a 485. So how do what are the available options? So the first option we have is the communication module, you have the P2P and you have the 485 or uh, 422 to 485. So these are all left side extension modules. These are all left side extension modules. You can see this has to be fitted onto the left of the PLC. So like this. Okay. So the model that we are going to use is not that. The model that we are going to use is not that. We are going to use the communication board on the top. We are going to use the communication board on the top. Uh, so in terms of how it is working in the program, it's very similar. It does not have any kind of uh, difference in terms of the programming, but the only difference is the hardware you are going to use. So here you can see there's a point to point module. And when you click on the point to point module, you can see it is showing up on the middle of the PLC. So if you are familiar with the S7-1200 PLC's hardware um, system, you can see that there is a, uh, on the middle, there is a port where you will be able to remove uh, an empty slot and put you want two inputs, uh, RTD module or an analog input or an analog output module, two relay output modules, something like this. So in that same location, we'll be able to add a point to point module. So this is a RS485 communication model with a screw terminal interface, with the screw terminal interface. So let me just try and drop it here. So now it is dropped here. So now we have to go into the setting. So you remember in the Profibus, we went and set up the configuration. Similarly, we have to go into the module and you can see there are some configurations required. So the only configuration you need to do is the IO link configuration. So the IO link configuration as per our requirement is, okay, so all the slave that I'm running now is having 9.6 kilobits per second, but you can set any of this. Uh, you have a parity, uh, no parity, even and none parity. And we have the data bit and we have the stop bit. So in our examples and in our videos, we are going to use the parity with the setting similar to this 9.6 kilobit per second or 9600 BPS. No parity, so no parity, 8 bits per character and one stop bit. So we call this 8 and 1. So 8 data bit, no parity and one stop bit. So this is the configuration we are going to use in our all our slaves. So in the Modbus 485 configuration, we have something that you need to remember that uh, all your slave devices, all the Modbus slave devices should have the same configuration. If the configuration is different in even in one of the device and that device will not respond to your query. Okay, that, that device will not respond to your query. So you have to make sure that all this is set up. So sometimes some slave devices, what happens is it might not have a configuration that is available in all the others. So you have to find a common configuration that works in all the slave modules. Sometimes so some module might not have a particular uh, configuration. Some module might have that particular configuration. So if the slave is uh, a programmable slave, so then you can change this configuration as well. Okay. So this is the requirement for the configuration. Okay. So yeah, so you can see here, this is the required configuration. So, and I also want to tell another uh, 
you know configuration or the wiring concept here so the wiring concept you have to remember one major thing so let me show you the wiring concept for this let, let's let me copy this article article number so let's say google let's say wiring diagram so normally it is like this so the the, the terminal is a onboard terminal it's an onboard terminal so let me find a better image let's say let's say images yes let's say i want uh, okay so look so this is this is the image of the device okay this is the standard image of the device so yeah, let's say you can see we have uh, m that is the common that is the ground if you are having it we have the a and b so in modbus we have a plus and b minus normally we have the ta and tb and the rts so how the wiring should be done so the wiring here is a bit it's a, i will not say it's a bit peculiar but the only thing that you need to remember is so the b from the slave module should come to the a and the a from the slave module should come to the b so how it works is for example uh, let's say i have um, uh, let me just quickly open sketch so let's say i have uh, i have the red that is the um, uh, plus okay that is the plus and i have the, the black it is going to be my minus okay so how have how it happens so for example i will have multiple uh, devices so i have one device 1 device 2 device 3 device 4 device 5 for example okay so here so there will be a plus and a minus plus and a minus plus and a minus so plus minus plus minus so how it works here so from the plus it will go to the plus minus 2 minus and from here it will go to the minus here and plus here so again from plus to plus minus 2 minus plus to plus minus 2 minus plus to plus and minus 2 minus so finally on the module on the siemens plc module what happens there will be plus minus a ta will be there and tb will be there okay on the side if you see the image uh, you can see here there is a ta and tb okay so what happens here is this and this is short circuited this and this is short circuited and this minus is given to the plus and this plus is given to the minus okay so all your devices will be in daisy chain okay all the devices will be having plus to plus and minus to minus but it when, but when it reaches the hardware it will become it will just get interchange okay so this is how the wiring will be done for the system as well okay so the next video we will see the programming